<coughs> we've just been to the um, hardware shop and we've bought ourselves a couple of hacksaw blades. They're fairly coarse teeth for a hacksaw blade, 18 points per inch. If you're using them as a, uh, a hand saw, that would be really quite fine. This will be a really good saw for kids because, first of all, they can make it. And secondly, it'll be easy to push through the, uh, the timber. What we're going to make is a little frame. Uh, and so we're going to choose ourselves some wood. And I've got this neat little handle. There it is. Neat little handle. Fits onto a uh, hacksaw blade. So we haven't made a saw yet. So uh, if you were to wrap that with a rag, you'd be able to hold onto it and you'd be able to use it like a pull saw to pull through a piece of timber. So, over here. I've chosen this little piece here. It's got a little bit of a curve to it, but it curves back the other way. So I'm going to cut it right down the left and just lock that out of there. Whoa! Yep. Blackberries and all sorts. Now these trees have actually been marked by the council for removal. They're doing a lot of uh, road work up there and a lot of this will just disappear. Okay. Here's the first piece that I want. I'm just encouraging the limb to bend away, away from the saw blade. So it doesn't jam the saw in the in the cut in the kerf. Now we're going to use a limited number of tools to uh, to do this. I've got a little whittling knife. It's going to get sharpened before I uh, start. If you don't have a little whittling knife, maybe you've got a pocket knife, and use one of the stubbier blades, but bear in mind that uh, we're going to be cutting into the timber and some of that will be lateral movement so you want to be careful not to break off a closing knife like that. I've uh, probably got a couple of other options in here. Ooh. It's a really nice little uh, fine carving knife. probably cut out this bit of me. Uh, yeah. We're going to measure up the timber and the important thing is that everything is based upon the size of your blade. So from this skinnier piece we're going to take a section out of there and this one's a bit thicker. We're going to take two sections out of there. So I'm going to place the blade across there and I'm going to mark that off. Now you could cut this through, saw through it, and I'll probably end up doing that. So that's the first cut there, the second cut will be there. Both these pieces are around about the same length of the blade. The third piece is going to be thinner than the other two. It's got to make a H frame blade will sit in it. So we're going to choose a very straight section out of there. So from about there, just before that little twig comes in, and it's going to be the length of the blade Now here's the thing about cutting with a, with a knife. If you were to lean back into that and push really hard and take a big swiping cut like that, that's dangerous. Okay? People tell you that cutting back towards you is dangerous. Swing in an uncontrolled arc, that's dangerous. What you need to do is put your thumb in behind the knife, put your left hand thumb in behind your other thumb, and that way you can creep up on it, take a little bit of a cut in there like that, and then when you need to go right through it, you use the pressure of this thumb and when you exceed the length of your thumb, 
your hand stops going forwards. So there's no great big sweeping out of control swings of a blade. Okay. Now, I reckon you're probably going to find it easier to get your uh, your blade out and just cut this one. Or, if you want to, you can just sit there with a knife, put the billy on, make some tea. A week or so ago we could actually see snow on the hills back there. There we go, let's cut through. That's the first one. Now we can neaten that off just by taking little cuts place the knife back on the same starting point, angle it in a little bit steeper, cut it through again. Work your way round, work your way round, work your way round. Okay, here's another cut. This is a towards you cut. So, you're actually going to do the movement is in the squeeze of your hand. So you can't cut any further, swing any longer than the length of the squeeze of your hand. So that's back towards you, it's not a dangerous cut. It's just paring away, just like you would with a good sharp chisel. Paring away that top surface, that end grain, until we've got a reasonably flat end on there and repeat. Now you can do this with a knife or you can saw that through. So just make a little notch in there, go back to the saw. It would probably help if we had something here to uh, saw against. Yeah, it's going to cross my foot, my knee. Take it easy because the saw will flex and bend and break if you push on it. So it's not enough we're cutting on the pull stroke. Cut and turn. It's going to try to close up on you. It's nearly through. Just snap that one there. I'm going to clean that up with a knife. I'm going to get in close. You're watching that. Hold it with your hand, pull towards you with the squeezing power of your, your fist. Pinch, pinch. Let me turn it this way. There we go. Peek in over my shoulder. Pinch and cut. Pinch and cut. Clean it all up. Now we're actually going to uh, take off most of these ends. We're going to make two very simple woodworking joints. And the lovely thing about two very simple woodworking joints made with sticks is if you get it wrong, put them on the uh, fire and start again. Pull, pull, pull. Well, if it starts to bind up, just turn it a little bit and do some more pulling. Now, we are dealing with freshly cut wood. It's full of sap and it's sticky. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm holding on to that and trying to lift the weight. That's forcing the cut open. You'll hear it start to click in a moment, creak as it cracks through the... And when it does that, yep, I'll just ease back. I don't want to actually cut. I want to cut right through, I don't want to break it. And the next one. So 
So, that's my three pieces of timber and one saw blade. They're going to go together a little bit like that on a handsaw. Now we just got to make the joints where these two come together. On the way down here I found something interesting. Laying on the side of the track, there's a skull. It's got very interesting there, teeth. This is a little grazing animal called a kangaroo. There's my leaf in there. The thinner piece we'll put aside and we'll look at these two. There's naturally a curve in them. I'm just going to let them roll in my hands so they curve like that. That has to be, the curve has to be in the same plane as the blade so that we don't end up with the frame of the saw racking like that. It can't be twisting. So we look at the curve of it and it probably wouldn't be a bad idea if I had a pencil to mark that straight up and down. But what we're going to do is we're going to get to about halfway. See there's about halfway now, this is about halfway. And we're just going to take a little flat piece out of there. A couple little push cuts with my thumb. Come back the other way. A little push cut. Okay, we've paired out what's now a nice flat surface. That's where we're going to put the joint onto that surface. So that's where the two joints are going to go together. And I like the bigger handle on this end. It's got a bit of a recurve to it. That's where we're going to be holding on to. So that's going to be the handle of the saw. And the rest is going to push through the tip of this way. Now the other tool which I brought with me, obviously I have a lot of tools down in here. The one we're going to use is a chisel. 12mm chisel, or uh, for of you who uh, like your measurements to be imperialist, that's about 6 thirteenths, 6 thirteenths of an inch, or half an inch. Now we're going to use that to cut a nice square little hole into there that the end of this will fit. Okay. Now what I'm going to actually do is start off by making the tenon, that's the little timber piece to go in there. That way I'll know how long the tenon has to be. I'm going to lay the blade of the chisel across there. That will be the width of my tenon, exactly the width of the chisel. So um, back with a knife, I'm going to put a flat edge in here. And then I'm going to turn it 180 degrees. I'm going to put a flat edge directly opposite that. Now if you see that, that's a little bit wide at this end. I'm going to bring that down just a bit more towards the width of my chisel. chisel, parallel faces, it's the beginning of a tenon. Now it swoops out like this a little bit. That won't be a problem in this particular job, but we might just pare that down just a little bit. Here we are literally on the side of the highway. We've got kangaroo skeletons and I can hear a frog in the background. All right. Now I'm just going to take enough of the bark off there so that it doesn't get soft and compressed when we uh, 
and we start to put some pressure on this joint. Just doing that by eye. That looks a little bit high on that edge there. We'll just take that off. Okay, I have nicely squared up tenon. Next job is to make that go into there. So, I really do need my carving stool at this point in time. I need to sit on my stool and I'll drive that fellow in there like that. But I'm going to stick that right through my hand if I do that here now. This little stool I made some time ago is for doing just this sort of work. It allows me to hold a piece of timber up against a stop like that whilst just uh, sitting. It's a very portable bench that you can uh, sit on as well. So I can place my work in there like that and it holds it in place. I can even put my knees, my shins in there against there and it's not going anywhere. So this tenon is going in there like that. So I'm going to take my chisel and I'm going to place my chisel round about there with the bevel to the inside of the mortise hole. I'm going to place that there like that and give it a good hit. Back to the tenon again. Check that that's going to sit in about there. A little bit of a scratch. Okay, smaller is better than larger because you can always make it get bigger. It's very difficult to make it get smaller again once you cut the roots off them. So the second cut marks the other end of the mortise hole, like that. If I turn that one around, roll towards you. There we go. So I'm going back, oh, two, three millimetres, and just lining up with the grain. It's not really critical. And I've pumped that in there like that. It's taken that little piece out back to that first cut. And the next one, let's use my thumbnail to push that into place. Chop. Once we got this first row in, it'll get much easier. Just wanted to roll away from you guys, you can't see it. Put that into there like that. started making a hole, turning it around, so we're coming from the other end of the uh, mortise hole. Place that in, give that a hit, pop, one, two, three. Now we've defined the shape of where the hole is going to be. And we can see how our tenon is going to fit into that hole there like that. Now the width of the tenon, the width of the mortise hole, is absolutely set by the width of my, um, my chisel blade. And I'm only going to use it for cutting cross grain. I'm really going to be very much trying not to cut down this way because it just won't be necessary. I won't be cutting with the grain at any point in time. So we just get there and we start back with the very first one again. Put it back in that same hole. Bump once. Down a bit. Bump twice. And... Turn it around. We'll turn the work around. So we take the flat, the flat surface against the end of the uh, mortise hole. 
work it backs and forwards a little bit. Don't um, over flex one of these chisels. They're not that they're not that tough in that direction. Turn and cut from this way. Now have a look at the, uh, the tenon. And we can see that our mortise hole is just about the perfect width, but it's just a little bit short. So we're going to put this into the um, into the stop there. Just put the chisel on there and just put your body weight onto it, wriggle it in, pair it back. That's a very nice tight tenon there. I can make it just a little bit deeper. So I will. Just flex that out of there. Let the chisel edges clean up the sides of the mortise hole. It's a little bit scruffy at the bottom so I'm just using the Leverage there, this way, that way, to get those fibers out. Now, you're not going to get a fine polished finish on a piece of green wood like you would on something that's been well seasoned, and it's not going to be necessary. There we go. Now, if you've just done that, you've done your first wood joint. You have a, um, a mortise and tenon joint, and um, we're going to now repeat that on the other side there, like that. Isn't that excellent? I need to trim that much off there. Down there with Skippy. Now I'll just clean that up a little. Nobody knows who Skippy is. I showed them Skippy before. Okay, now once again we're going to now make the matching tenon at the other side. So you're going to place that part of the, uh, the saw on there like that and then you can make a little cut which will be parallel in that plane. We need that down to the width of the chisel. It's not quite there yet, we'll just sneak up on it. And it's just very slightly trapezoid this way. If you hold the back of the blade on there like that, that'll tell you that we've actually dipped this way. And if you hold it on there like that, that's pretty close to parallel do this forward here. So we know that we need to take some off this edge here. Test it on the chisel. Oh, we're getting close. A mill to go there. We'll take it off the side next, but we'll just check. Off that side. That's looking better. Now we need just a little bit off this side of this one. Okay. And we are at the width of the chisel. Now what we need to do is to make the next mortise hole in here, just like we did before. OK, 
can take it. Oh, we haven't done that. We need to uh, give us a square end to work with. Now a nicely uh, sharpened chisel with a, a good polished back on it is quite sharp along these edges. You not cut your finger sharp and that's bad, but it will definitely clean up those fibres going through there. And I guess what I'm doing is cutting to about about half the depth, half the depth of this piece. We're through to about the midway. One little piece there is just hanging on. Whoa, look at that. You can see where we're going. We've uh, just about got ourselves a saw. Now, these, these are not interchangeable joints. You have made them according to the thickness of this piece and this piece. They don't swap around too well. So um, I'm going to mark that one A and I'm going to mark that in the bottom of the hole there A because that makes sense doesn't it? And we're going to go around on this side here and we're going to mark the face of that one B and the bottom Logically, that one will also be B in there. Next bit. On the screen it tells you how many hours of recording is left. Out. <laughs> I think we just made the bloopers. <sighs> I'm sure you're laughing inside. That's the cameraman. That's not the camera, by the way. <laughs>